Hey everyone, welcome back to the course. So in the last video, we talked about who I am as your instructor. We also talked about some of the objectives of this course, as well as some information about how the course is structured. Now in this video, we're gonna go over a brief introduction to social engineering, and then we'll move into our labs. So what is social engineering? Well, you can read there on the screen, but basically the goal here is to deceive individuals so that way we can get information out of them. So how do we do that? Well, generally speaking, we'll research a target company or we'll research a victim, but in most cases, as a penetration tester or ethical hacker, we're gonna be going against a company. So we'll research a target company, we'll select a particular victim or grouping of victims. We're gonna to try to then establish some kind of a relationship. So maybe that's connecting with them on different social media channels like LinkedIn or Facebook. And then even, and also even uh, going to like a local coffee shop where we know they go to and trying to strike up conversation. And then our ultimate goal is to exploit that relationship. So the goal there is to try to get maybe something like user credentials or sensitive information about the company, maybe some of the systems that they're using, maybe even information about financial stuff. So maybe we can figure out how they're doing specific transactions in the company, and that will allow us to then craft a phishing email that we send off and it gets somebody to wire us a bunch of money. So we talk about social engineering and it's all a human-based type of thing. These are kind of some of the common uh, ways or some of the common methods act to, and they'll actually do something. So with authority, for example, we have, you know, someone in a position of authority. So maybe you call and you say, hey, it's the FBI, we're going to arrest you, or, you know, it's IRS, we're going to arrest you if you don't give us this information. Uh, but more than likely, an attacker would use something like, hey, it's the IT help desk, or hey, it's, you know, Joe Schmo, I'm the VP of whatever, and I need this money wired quickly. And also might even be like a mid-level manager type of person, like a Bill Lumberg, who's pictured here from the movie Office Space. So a lot of different ways they can do this, but generally speaking, some position of authority. Now, what happens with most people is they're scared of like management. And I guess, I guess scare is not the appropriate word to use, but they're concerned over management. So if management calls, they're trying to please, right? So they're trying to be a people pleaser. So this is why this works so well. People are like, oh, well, this is somebody with authority. They're telling me what to do, you know, and we're conditioned as children all the way through adulthood to listen to somebody in a position of authority. So we're more likely to take action and say, oh, well, let me hurry and you know wire this money. Let me hurry and give you my username and password, whatever the case might be. So that's why it's important, as we'll talk about later, to develop a security awareness program for your employees. Liking, are the people likable? You know, of course, all of us like Oprah, right? So are they likable? Are you really gonna, like, let's say you're, you're the victim in this situation and I'm the penetration tester, right? And I come in and you interact with me and I'm grouchy and complaining. And are you really going to want to keep talking to me? Of course not, right? But what if I, what about if I'm like kind of bubbly, happy, like we're joking around, having a good time? You're more likely to actually divulge information to me. So that's why you want to be likable if you're a pen tester. You want to make sure that you're likable and you're able to adapt to different personality types. So that way, as you're interacting with different people in an organization, you can model yourself to whatever behavior they have. And then from there, exploit that. Reciprocation. So I mentioned here giving a gift. Now, one common method that's used is, let's say that I call up and I pretend I'm with the IT help desk. And I say, hey, you know, Sally, we've had a lot of, you know, uh, viruses coming on the systems lately. I just want to walk you through doing some things to prevent against that. Or even something as simple as, hey, I'm calling up from the help desk and I just want to make sure your computer's running fa as fast as possible. If they, you know, and that gives, opens it up for the user to then say, oh, it's been pretty slow lately. They say, okay, well, let's run a couple of things and let's try to clear up some things so it runs a little faster. And, you know, and so you throw it, show them like basic stuff like defragging the disk or whatever. Um, it's uh, running a C cleaner if it's Windows. And so you do that and hey, oh yeah, it's, it's running a little faster now. Okay, great. Oh, by the way, we have this new piece of software we wanted to test out, this new application. Uh, do you mind just downloading the latest version of it and just testing it out? Now that you, you know, I know your computer's running faster now, so, and, and it seems like you're kind of tech savvy because I walked you through these steps, you were able to follow them, which is a great thing. That's a really great job. And if you don't mind just downloading, installing this, and while I'm on the phone, just run through it and tell me what you think of, of this upgraded version. A lot of times people will actually fall for that and do that. They'll actually download whatever software you want them to download and then they'll go ahead and use it. And from there, you can take control of their system. Consistency. So let's say I'm a new employee and I've said, all right, I, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and follow along with these policies. And let's say you call me up and say, you're, hey, you know, you're with the IT help desk 
and you just want to make sure that I'm going to follow these specific, you know, security policies and procedures, uh, you know, as part of using the information systems in, in the company. And, you know, of course, you're new. You don't know who I am, right? So you assume that I, it's it's legitimate. And you say, yeah, of course, I'm going to follow that stuff. You say, great. You know, you know, or I say, excuse me, I say, great. And I say, all right, well, you know, all, all I want to do is make sure that you're compliant with your password. Um, and that way I can give you recommendations if, if I don't feel like it's strong enough. And so, you know, you tell me your password over the phone and I say, okay, well, great. You know, so, but moving forward, what you probably want to do with your password is follow this type of criteria, you know, so that's a little more advanced than, you know, what you're currently using and even what we have in the policy, but that'll be the best thing to do. What I'm doing there as the attacker is I'm trying to get you to structure your password the way I want you to. And that way I can hopefully guess it a little easier. Now, of course, I've already gotten your password that you're using right now, but I may want to exploit you later on. Maybe I know the company updates their passwords every 30 days, makes the users update their passwords every 30 days. So I'm going to wait 30 days and then I'm going to try to figure out what your password is based off what your old one was and the new criteria I've given you. Because I'm going to assume, hopefully at least, that you've followed that criteria to develop your new password. So also validation. So if I call you uh, and, for example, I say, hey, you know, I'm conducting a survey. Uh, I'm from, you know, HR. I'm conducting a survey and, you know, these five other people in your department have already done it, um, you know, or these five people that I know you know of have already done this survey, um, you know, they've already cooperated, they've already done the survey, then, you know, can you go ahead and just do the survey? It's only five questions, you mind doing that? And then, you know, what I could do there is potentially have questions that help me draw out information about maybe like your username or your password. Scarcity, you know, this one's a great thing that like marketers use uh, when they're trying to sell you stuff. Um, so, for example, you go, you get like emails from, you know, someplace. Let's say you buy suits. You get an email from the suit place and they say, oh, you know, right now it's 20% off or whatever like that. Now, if you actually look at the prices, realistically, they're usually around the same price. Um, but they might try to trick you and say, oh, yeah, it's 20% off. It's only this price. If you're not mindful of prices, you'd be like, oh, I got to hurry and get this. It's only for 24 more hours. Uh, we're doing the same thing here with social engineering attacks, right? So you'll see a lot of phishing emails will say, you know, you've hurry, you got to send me the money quickly or, you know, quick, click this link. We've got to update your password in the next 24 hours because your account's been compromised. Whatever the case might be, the goal here is to create urgency so somebody doesn't think through that, hey, this might be an actual attack. As I mentioned, security awareness program. So some of the key things you want to include there is how attackers actually are performing these attacks. The best thing to do is show your employees examples. So for example, if I want to talk about password security, I'll show them an example of cracking a, a simple password with John the Ripper or some other equivalent tool. Procedures, make sure they understand the procedures, uh, the security procedures uh, to follow in the event that they think there's a phishing attack going on, right? Or some kind of social engineering attack. So do they call the manager? Do they call somebody else? Do they call IT to verify things? Data classification. So if you have different classification systems in place, so for example, if we're working with like classified information or even just certain sensitive data in a private company, we want to make sure that we communicate that to employees so they know if there's an extra step they need to take before divulging that information. Security policies. Again, we want to make sure our employees are aware of any security policy in policies in place and explain those policies to them in terms they can understand. And then obligation. So a lot of times employees won't understand, excuse me, won't understand their obligation to the organization for security. So just make sure you communicate that effectively, put up like signs and that sort of stuff and just say, look, you're, you need to maintain compliance with this because this is the reason, right? Or these are the reasons. And if you don't, here are the consequences to that. All right, so just a quick post-assessment question here. John's a new employee and he receives a call from Sally. So Sally's claiming to be with the IT help desk. Sally states that there's been a ransomware attack at the company and she needs to just walk John through some steps to prevent against the attack on his particular computer. What should John do first? So should he just comply automatically with Sally's request and follow her instruct instructions? Should he ask for a callback number and then call back to that number to verify this is a help desk? Should he ask for a callback number and then during his orientation to verify Sally's actually an employee with them? Or should he just hang up the phone? All right, so if you guessed answer C here, that's actually the best answer to do first. So try to get information about the attacker. Now, I ha actually had a situation years ago where uh, it was a social engineering type of attack or a scam, if you will. They called me up, said, oh, you know, you owe money to whatever. I Some company that I had never heard of and, and 
And, you know, you've got to send me this money. And so I just played along to get information because I was going to file a, a case with the FBI. So um, I played along. I got a lot of information. They sent me a bunch of stuff like bank account information and that sort of stuff. Um, so I flipped the, the tables on them there. And, of course, you know, I reported it to the FBI. I don't know what came of that. Hopefully something good. All right, so in this video, we just talked about social engineering at kind of a high level. In the next few videos, we're going to jump into our labs.